and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. We are back again for the second event of the PGA season. Sanderson's Farm Championship held at the Country Club of Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Contest selection. The number one contest is the Billy Ho Contest. So make sure you get into that one. A little bit disappointing on the Ryder Cup turnout last week, but I'll let that slide. I know we got early on NFL action and all that kind of good stuff, but get in this contest. It's only $2 entry, 50 people max, top two paid, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, actually, when it comes to contest selection real quick, I would save a little cash as we get closer to lock because, like I, like I said, uh, there are always chances for overlays in the fall swing season. And when they get closer to the central and the eastern time zones like they do, uh, us eastern time zone people don't have the extra three hours like the 10 o'clock lock times. It's still going to be like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. lock times. So sometimes we could catch those good deals on like the $3, 20 maxes and, and things of that nature. So be on the lookout. Okay, so weather. Uh, the early look, it looks dry. Uh, it's basically this late summer heat wave, dry spell, drought. Uh, we've we've had in Louisville where the temperatures have been in the mid-upper 80s. That's what we're going to see. But the temperatures do drop about 10 degrees over the weekend. I don't know exactly how that's going to affect. It still doesn't show any rain, maybe a mild possibility Saturday. But, you know, whenever to fronts come through there's always a chance so just keep in mind what what you got going on there uh so last thing before we get started if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel i really appreciate it smash the like button and uh leave a comment tell me who you got this week i was really hoping to see a sahith agala back to back but he's not in the field this week i really thought he'd be he was just as good a fit here uh, but anyway, we uh, we still got plenty to uh, plenty of guys like the A Bear uh, and such. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Okay, Country Club of Jackson uh, at at seventy four hundred sixty one yards, par seventy two. Uh, this uh, Country Club of Jackson is located in a in a pretty flat plain of country out there in Mississippi. So the fairways are Bermuda. The rough is not a factor. The course does not play as long as you would think at 7,400 yards. The greens run average 6,200 square feet. They are Bermuda. They do tend to run fast to lightning fast. Sounds like that's the case. I don't think they've had a lot of rain. I didn't really look at the last couple of weeks, but I just kind of treat it like it's been across the entire Midwest and, and Bible Belt type places is that it's just been really, really dry. Only five holes with water in play. Uh, the toughest holes are there's like a couple of long par threes that are over 200, 220, something like that. They're pretty tough. They're like the top five hardest holes on the course. Then there are a few other long par fours, 480 to 500 plus. So I'd say seven of the nine holes can be quite challenging uh, now, but there are another seven holes or so that are super easy. The main goal to compete here is to really, really, really get after those par fives. I know that's what we say in almost every event with four par fives because that's where golfers do their scoring, obviously. That's the easiest way for them to get a birdie. Uh, it's an easiest way for them to consistently get birdies. Big swings when you get eagles and, and getting home in two. These are reachable. Holes three and 11 especially have higher eagle rates. Uh, but the thing of it is uh, about this course is anybody can compete here. You don't have to be bomb and gouged. Cam Champ bomb and gouged a few years ago. Uh, they said, oh, well, that worked out for him. Well, he kind of gained a lot of strokes putting that week. And I'd say he rode the hot putter to the victory more than he just bombed and gouged the course. Uh, because driving is negated somewhat here due to the limited you can see on i got the pro visualizer thing going and it shows you it doesn't really show you the landscape as well as i'd like but the trees are sporadic but they are uh they're due for like a, a major trim project after this tournament so there may be some overlying branches that are going to be in the way of some wayward tee shots so just keep that in mind um 
like I said, last year's camp, uh, last year's champ, Mackenzie Hughes, uh, 57th in strokes gained off the tee. Year before that, Sam Burns, obviously number one. Sergio Garcia, one of the best drivers of the golf ball year before that. Uh, go back to 2017, Ryan Armour was like 39th. So good overall tee to green game is going to be fine. Uh, the strongest attributes I see in the winners are the good approach game with the emphasis on the wedges, like 75 to 125, maybe 150, things of that nature. Uh, the second one is the short game, uh, but the putting, putting, putting. This is a John Rom effing putting contest, if I ever saw one, because most of these guys are going to be pretty good at getting the ball in play and knocking it on the green and giving themselves opportunities. Uh, any player worth their salt will be able to do so. But the ones that will do well this week for us in DraftKings and uh, compete to win will be the ones converting at a higher clip. So that, uh, say that op opportunities gained uh, is going to be a big factor uh, in this one. But putting uh, from, say, 8 to 15 feet is going to be huge. It's going to be a birdie fest. It's going to be 20 under. So you got to make putts and you got to score on those par fives. Okay. Let's share the screen and look at a model and some pricing. All righty then. I uh, got this set up. This is Billy Ho's Sanderson Farms by Free Drop. I am Free Drop Billy. If you ever see me, uh, you probably don't see me all that often up the leaderboards, but I do tend to do all right. That's why I have to cover up my balance over here to show you. Uh, I, I really don't want to embarrass anybody on on all the mad riches that I got over this weekend. I didn't do pretty good in the NFL though, uh, so uh, I'm I'm happy with the weekend overall. Uh, it is new sports betting is new in Kentucky also, which is kind of cool. So I, I've just been kind of piling on those no brainers and easy easy uh, promotions uh, to get uh, build my bankroll up a little bit. Always a good thing. I think I'll be placing some golf bets this week, so we might discuss that toward the end of the program. Stick around. Okay. Uh, this is the Golf Betting System website. This is going to be DraftKings pricing, and uh, it gives you, uh, oh, all you need to know as far as course history and recent form, you know, wh what they're, where they're at and what they've been doing. So that's always a good thing. But if you just scan through this, there's not really a whole lot of like the, you know, I think Sam Burns, Sam Burns is obviously not here. Aberg, though, that's one thing I did want to point out. Ludwig uh, Aber, Aber is uh, the only one that actually came back from the Ryder Cup to play in this golf tournament. I mean, he had to, his first Ryder Cup, the resounding victory. You know, he's out there on the golf course. Is he really going to be back? And and his mind right to play highest price guy at ten nine food for thought. Let's look at uh uh this is the key stats from Rick Run Good's website and I agree I'll put my own key stats up there toward the end and uh, you'll you'll see it here in a second. But the approaches obviously from the the rough that that makes a lot of sense. But the 120, 100, 125, you can see all the the putting stats. Scrambling, I, I include that in short game uh, inside of 30 yards. Short game, if you don't know what short game is, it's the combination of around the green and putting together. Like ball striking similarly would be for, uh, you know, that case off the tee and approach. Uh, but anyway, you can see the the birdies and the, the consecutive holes below par, always important. Putting from 7, 9, 15 to 20 feet. All that stuff way, way high. And here's your course fit, guys. Eric Cole, Alex Noren, garbage. I, I, if he beats me, he beats me. Uh, I, but he's not a guy I'm going to play. I don't know where these adjusted fit stats come from. But the guy is just not who everybody thinks he is, in my opinion. Nikolai Hogard is a withdrawal. Grayson Murray is actually halfway interesting. That guy was an absolute disaster there on tour for about when I first started playing DFS uh, about six, six years ago, Grayson Murray and Keith Mitchell were like the same two types of guys on the golf course. That'll tell you that Grayson Murray was pretty good. He, he went through, I guess, a bad stretch with his temper and his emotions. He can't keep his emotions in check. He would just, 
if he got off to a bad start, it would just be withdrawal and take my ball and go home kind of thing. But he's been uh, righting the ship a little bit, I'd say, toward the end of this season. So him being in this tournament, I, I, that's an interesting play. I'm Dylan Wu's a guy I always love to play. Ches um uh, Hubba Hubbard, Grio, Aberg, Peter Quest. I think is a good flop lag guy because he missed that cut at Fortinet, but I think he's an even better fit here. I think he's a better burrito putter than he is on POA, and he has all the tools needed to play well here, so I will be heavily uh, invested in some Peter Quest. Obviously, Jaeger bombs. Uh, Nate Lashley is another guy that's had some good success here. Hodges, there's a bunch of dudes right here. Uh, this is what the custom model looks like. And I will give you guys a snippet like this that's going to show you, uh, you know, my top 13 or whatever in the uh, draft or uh, in my first run model. And it's basically these guys here. And I kind of went through and I pulled, I think, the Rocket Mortgage model and then made some adjustments. I added in the Bermuda putting, the fast greens, things of that nature, a little bit more emphasis on the wedges. Uh, and just steered it that way, put a little bit of driver driving distance in there, 100 to 125. Like I said, I split the difference because if you know me, I don't like buckets themselves, but because a guy could be number one from 75 to 100, and then you get him to 100 to 125, and he's 50th. So why is that? Is it he he's no he's great at 99 yards out, but at 102 he sucks. I don't believe that. <laughs> so uh, that's just another thing. The opportunities gained, these are the, I didn't put anything emphasis here, but you will just take out greens gained and we'll just see what happens when, uh, what's this one, 10 feet or closer. I'd rather have 15 feet. That's the one I want. Make that eight. We'll just see what it does. Doesn't look like it shook things up. Oh, there we go. Eric Coley Cole. Coley Cole is the man. That dude just can flat out putt. I will definitely be invested in some Coley Cole this week. Uh, not so much on the Charlie Ho I, Charlie Hoffman. I had a little bit of interest, but he actually, I think, missed the cut at Fortinet. Uh, the off the tee was god awful. I think he lost like eight strokes off the tee for Charlie Hoffman. So he might actually be better this week, flop lag. Uh, because it's you don't have to be as accurate, and there's no way he's going to be that bad off the tee. So I may swing back around to Charlie Hoffman. With him, with him popping in the model this high, it's kind of hard to ignore. A guy like Sam Ryder, dude makes a uh, – I guarantee you he'll, he'll make one eagle this week. I will put that on the board, one eagle for Sam Ryder. Uh, now, I didn't do really any around the green or scrambling, um, but – I'll run several different models. I got the Bermuda. I got the 10 to 15 feet putting. And then I got the bonus putting, which I kind of like this one because it's putts made from 20 feet out and then putts made for five feet or closer. So, you know, we want those guys that are uh, on their games and concentrating and paying attention to those inside five foot putts because people can lose golf tournaments that way when they're not at their best. Keep that in mind. Now, I don't know if there's anything else, uh, so we're going to go over here to the uh, DraftKings and maybe just throw five or six guys in there to see what we're looking at. Now, I don't know. I, I, we'll say hashtag. We'll just do say, I, like I said, I love me some Coley Cole. Um, let's see. Where, uh, what was I talking about just a minute ago? Jaeger bombs. Uh, the course fit. Let's go back over to the course fit. Quest. I think Quest would be a guy. Well, let's put Quest in there. That way we're balancing things out a little bit. Do a little jump around. Then you got guys like Hubbard. There's a bunch of guys. I don't know that I'll play a whole lot in this 9K range. Mitchell's form's been off. Herbert is just an anomaly. I, I don't understand him. Uh, he I ha actually, I think he played in the Fortinet and played pretty well. So I don't know where that's coming from. But you got Hubbard, Smalley, Hollywood Hoagie. These are all guys in the in this AK. Davis Thompson, guys that can get red hot 
is what I what I like to see. Uh, a little bit further down, the, and then this lower 7K range, probably I'm not the only one. Cheese, I'll probably – I might play a little cheese. Revy, I don't think I'm going to go at champ. The, there's Grayson Murray, 7,300. Uh, not too many. Carson Young is another guy. He's just a good all-around all player. Uh, the putter is the only thing that I think keeps him from making cuts. And and he's not all that bad a putter, really. Uh, but getting down into the 6K range, it's choose your poison. Like I said, there's Chuck Hoffman. We can toss him in a lineup. You can see where that leaves us, 8,500. So uh, you, you get two guys down here. Actually, one guy I do like to play, uh, I would like to play this week, is the Gribbler, Cody Gribble, lefty. Uh, and we can double up on the lefties if you want to go Garrick Higo with them. You got the double G and the double Bs. So uh, Gribble and Higo. Now, yeah, that's 9,500 with two players left right there. So, you know, you can you can grab a guy. You can go up top. I like S.H. Kim. Uh, Jaeger I like. Grio I like. I'm, I'm still not uh, convinced on Aberg yet. It's hard to say. Uh, I just the only thing if if he was coming in fresh and and not off that uh, Ryder Cup in Rome, I'd have to say the guy would be a smash uh, smash spot to win his first golf tournament this week. But uh, that is an obstacle you're going to have to navigate yourself. So best of luck with that. Be on the lookout. I think I might be doing a DraftKings show this week. So until then, see you soon. Thanks for watching.